Welcome back to the Vantage Seminar. And for our last talk in this series, very happy to have Philip Nyman speaking on Q curves over odd degree number fields and sporadic points. And uh, Philip, is it all right if we video this talk? Yes, of course. Oh, thank you. Okay, thanks, uh, Rachel, for the introduction. And also, uh, thanks to you and Drew for organizing this uh, great series of talks uh, about uh, torsion groups and uh, Galois representations. Uh, the talks so far have, have been great, in my opinion, and I'm very happy to be giving a talk here also. Okay, so uh, everything uh, that I will be uh, talking about, uh, it, it is contained in, uh, in two papers which have been written. Uh, the first one has been written with uh, John Cremona and the second one with Abby Bourdon. Uh, okay, uh, so before I uh, say uh, much more, uh, let me give a few definitions. So uh, to understand what we are talking about, although most of them should be known to well, all, if not uh, most, if not all of you. So let uh, E1 and E2 be elliptic curves and isogeny from E1 to E2 is a morphism uh, which sends the base point of one with the curve to the base point of the other. And we will say that they are both defined over K if uh, both curves are defined over K and uh, the, the isogeny itself is defined over K on the map. And uh, if no field is stated, uh, when we just say an isogeny, we will always mean over Q bar. And uh, so the object that we will be studying are, are Q curves. The whole talk will be about Q curves. And uh, an elliptic curve is called the Q curve if it is isogenous to all of its Galois conjugate. So uh, if you were uh, listening carefully here, this does not mean that if we have an, uh, e, an elliptic curve E, a Q curve E over number field K, that it is isogenous over K to its conjugate, but only over the algebraic closure. And uh, uh, if we have an elliptic curve over K, uh, a number field K and the uh, prime P, then of course the absolute Galois group acts on the uh, phi torsion group of E, uh, and this induces a mod P Galois representation attached to E. And uh, one of the most important, uh, probably the most important uh, open conjecture in, in this uh, uh, field is a uh, series uniformity question or, or conjecture. Uh, it was originally stated uh, by Serre uh, as a question, but has been since formally uh, conjectured by both Zivina and Sutherland uh, independently. And uh, the question asks, does there exist uh, a constant C such that for all primes P larger than uh, this constant C and for all curves uh, defined over Q without CM, we have that uh, uh, this mod P Galois representation is, is subjective. So the conjecture is that the answer is yes. and uh, that this C might uh, be 37. This might be the best possible C. And uh, okay, so uh, well, why look at these Q curves? So I, I will give only two motiv motivations, although uh, there are many more. So uh, Ribet proved in uh, 1992 that uh, Q curves are exactly the elliptic curves of a number field that are modular in, in the sense of, of being quotients of J1 of N or some N. There are a few notions of modularity, which all agree over Q, but uh, not over number fields. So if you take this notion of modularity, then Q curves are exactly modular. So by the time uh, this was uh, proved, assuming series conjecture, which has later been proved by uh, Carr and Vinterberger. And uh, another uh, motivation comes from Diophantine equations, uh, in particular Fermat type equations. And Q curves have really extensively been used there uh, in, in the modular method. Uh, uh, where <clears throat> one constructs a Frey curve, and this Frey curve uh, uh, is often a Q curve, and one has, uh, has to understand uh, it's, uh, the Galois representation of, of this Q curve, in particular whether it's irreducible. Okay, so uh, uh, what, what do Q curves look like? Where can we find them? Uh, so the most uh, basic example is an elliptic curve defined over Q. Uh, it is obviously isogenous to all of its uh, Galois conjugates, namely to, to itself. Uh, in fact, I, I like to think of Q curves as, as the somehow natural generalization of, of an elliptic curve over Q. If you think of it, an, an elliptic curve over Q uh, is an elliptic curve that is uh, fixed by the absolute uh, Galois group. 
And uh, a Q curve is an elliptic curve whose isogeny class is fixed by that. So, so it's, it's in, in a sense, a natural generalization. Uh, then a base change of a Q curve is a Q curve, so that the condition is still satisfied, of course. Uh, a twist of a Q curve is also a Q curve. And uh, from these two things, it follows that an elliptic, any elliptic curve with a rational J invariant is again a Q curve. Uh, then a curve that is isogenous to, to a Q, Q curve is also a Q curve. So this is a property of, of really the isogeny class uh, being a Q curve. Also, the theory of complex multiplication also tells us that any CM elliptic curve is also a Q curve. And uh, we can make a, a tower of these sets of elliptic curves, uh, leaving out only the CM elliptic curves, which don't really fit in nicely in this tower. So we can uh, take the set of all elliptic curves, which includes uh, Q curves, which then uh, includes uh, elliptic curves isogenous to uh, some elliptic curve with rational J invariant, which includes elliptic curves that have rational J invariant themselves, which then includes also uh, base changes of elliptic curves. And uh, you will see this tower a few more times in the talk. Uh, it will be an important tower. Uh, I may even call it the fundamental tower of my talk. And uh, since I will be using it so much, I, I try to uh, uh, give some notation, uh, the most natural I think of. So uh, by QC, I will uh, you know Q curves. By IJ, elliptic curves that are isogenous to elliptic curves with rational J invariants. And uh, with J, elliptic curves with rational J invariant. And B, base changes of elliptic curves. And uh, so, of course, we will always look at these sets uh, over some over some number field or, or over uh, some set of number fields, say degree D number fields. And if we restrict these, uh, I mean, intersect the, the, the set, uh, each step of this tower with elliptic curves over uh, some, some set of uh, number fields, we can ask which statements about Galois representations of elliptic curves in each of these sets can we, of elliptic curves can we prove? So this, this is a seminar about Galois representations. So of course we want to ask questions like this. And, uh, uh, the, the most notable or obvious manifestations of Galois representations uh, of elliptic curves are isogenies and torsion groups. So, uh, in particular, can degrees of isogenies and size of tor torsion groups be bounded in, in uh, whatever sense th this makes sense? And uh, I, I should say that I will not talk about CM elliptic curves. Uh, and the reason is, uh, as Pete said uh, in his talk, uh, that uh, somehow one usually, especially when looking at Galois representation, it really makes sense to look at uh, CM elliptic curves and, and non-CM elliptic curves separately. This is one reason. And the other reason is that their Galois representations are no so, now so well understood that uh, I really have nothing to add, especially over odd degree number fields with which uh, I will be uh, talking. Almost everything I will say it will be over odd degree number fields. And, uh, uh, th this is uh, so well understood by uh, the papers of Bouillon, Clark, uh, their collaborators, and also uh, Alvaro Lozano Okay, uh, so uh, for each of these sets S uh, and for uh, integer D, uh, we can denote by S of D the set of all, all such elliptic curves defined over all number fields of degree D. This, this is what will be interesting, at least in this part of my talk. And then uh, we denote by T of, T of S, for, for set S, uh, the set of all possible torsion groups of elliptic curves uh, in, in this set S. Uh, and uh, I will list the known results uh, over Q, quadratic fields and cubic fields, and, uh, and then over general number, uh, general degree number fields, and in particular general degree number fields uh, will be what we are interested in. This is something that I uh, looked at uh, in, in my paper with John and so okay, let's start with Q. Uh, so here uh, things are not very interesting. All these sets, of E of one is equal to Q C of one. All these sets are the, the same, and they just consist of Q. And uh, of course, famously, Maser proved that the torsion groups of elliptic curves over Q consists of uh, these fifteen groups, where uh, C n really denotes uh, a cyclic group of order n. And, uh, but already over quadratic fields, uh, the situation becomes much more interesting. Uh, so, uh, as has already been mentioned uh, in Berinder's talk and perhaps even before, uh, Q 
can com, uh, Momoas and, and Kamian improved uh, what the possible torsion groups of pairs of radicals are. It's, it's these 26 groups. And uh, if you look at base changes of elliptic curves over Q, you, you get uh, 22 groups. Uh, you, you miss out on these four. And uh, if you look at elliptic curves with rational J invariance, then, then you uh, hit another uh, group in 13 torsion. This was first published by Sorsakis in published and never published, but was also later proved by a student of mine, Tomislav Guzic. Uh, he, in fact, proved the TJ of P for all P, so also uh, TJ of two. Uh, and uh, the reason I got interested in this subject is that I, I, I was wondering whether we can prove what the torsion groups of Q pairs of quadratic fields are. And uh, together with Samuel F. Horn, we managed to prove uh, that uh, the groups we get are, in fact, all the groups that, that we get over quadratic fields except 11 torsion. We never hit uh, uh, 11 torsion. So I think that's, uh, in fact, quite interesting, uh, interesting that. Uh, that in each step of the way, in each level of the tower, we, we, we get a different set of possible torsion groups. And another result that uh, I think is also very nice, and I, sh I should mention here, is a result of Lefourn, uh, which says that over any imaginary quadratic field, uh, Serre's uniformity conjecture is true for Q curves uh, uh, that are not isogenous to elliptic curves uh, uh, with rational J invariance. And of course, you have to throw <coughs> throughout CM elliptic curves. If you're talking about uh, series uniformity conjecture. So I find this very interesting. So we don't know, uh, you know, series uniformity conjecture over Q or, or over this set, but if we go right here and throw out everything below, th then we suddenly know, know this uh, series uniformity conjecture. And uh, another question that I, I also find very interesting is uh, asking the inverse question. So uh, if, we, if we have one of these groups, where exactly in this uh, tower of sets, where do we expect to find it? Uh, do we expect to find it anywhere in, in each level or maybe just in the highest level? Because all of these sets below are, are really very sparse uh, in the set of all of it. So generically, generically, you would expect somehow most of the torsion groups to, to really appear here or only here, radically here. And something really different happens in, 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 in certain instances. So, uh, for example, elliptic curves with 13 torsion appear only in uh, elliptic curves with rational J invariance. So, none appear here and none appear anywhere else. And uh, elliptic curves with 18 torsion appear right here and only here, nowhere lower in, in this tower. And elliptic curves with 16 torsion appear uh, really only as base changes of elliptic curves uh, over Q. And uh, I didn't want to list them because it would be a bit off topic and uh, uh, too long, but similar results about elliptic curves with isogenies for various N over quadratic fields have also been approved by, by Peter Brown and myself. Uh, Ekin also talked about uh, results uh, in this direction by her and Siksek and also uh, uh, Yosha Box proved some results uh, also in this direction. Uh, and okay, let's just say a few more words about cubic fields. So a uh, very recent paper of uh, Derek Setropolsky, Van Hooy, Morrow, and Zurich Brown proved what the torsion groups over cubic fields are. Uh, you get these groups. And uh, I should also mention that this is the largest degree where, where we know uh, this completely. We don't know anything for any larger D. Uh, if we look at base changes of elliptic curves, will we get this set of, of, of groups? Uh, you, as I said, uh, uh, Guzic proved the results about TJ of three, and in this case, they, they are just the same as TG of three. But uh, we have an open problem here, uh, which I guess no one really looked at, is uh, what the possible torsion groups of Q curves over odd degree number fields are. And this is, uh, as you will see uh, very soon, this is equal to T of IJ of three. Okay, uh, so uh, now onto the topic of, of my paper with John, and this is a general bounds. Uh, for uh, torsion groups and is uh, isogenies of Q curves over odd degree number fields. Uh, so, uh, very famously, uh, Morel proved that uh, the order of uh, the groups uh, of a torsion group of an elliptic curve over a degree num D number field is bounded by, by some bound that depends only on D, not on the number field and not the, the elliptic curve, but really just on the degree. 
And then one can ask, uh, well, wh why look at these bounds? C can one really hope to get any better, anything better? And uh, the answer is that, in fact, one can if, if, if we really restrict the D that we are looking at. So uh, uh, the order of groups in TB of D, uh, so base changes of elliptic curves, for D that is not divisible by any small primes, say, take D to be a large prime, a uh, prime larger than seven, is bounded by 16, really. So, so by, by an absolute constant. And uh, the same is true for Tj of P, uh, where uh, P is prime, and this is bounded by 28. And what uh, John and I prove is that the order of groups in two key, two key torsion of Q curves uh, over prime degree number fields for P larger than seven is also bounded by 16. And uh, if one includes P equals two, three, five, seven, then the correct bound is almost certainly 28, the same bound that you get, you get here. So it is at least 28, and I would be very surprised if it was anything else than 28. And these bounds, I should, I, these bounds that you see are all best possible. Uh, and uh, you might wonder, okay, but uh, are we cheating here? I mean, we're, we're choosing our degrees. Can one really choose? Uh, conveniently choose our degrees here and get also result uh, an absolute bound. And it is not hard to show that, that the answer is no. That really, if you vary through all, uh, through, if you take any infinite set of these and then uh, look at T E of D, that then uh, you will always get infinitely many groups. So no such uh, absolute bound exists for all of the groups. And so I think this is also maybe another nice reason uh, to look at uh, this tower of, of elliptic curves. As, uh, there are statements that you might be interested in proving, uh, let's say here. Uh, let's say you, you want to pr prove something about the Fermat type equation and you're in, interested in, in the reducibility of, of, of uh, the Galois representation of your Q curve. So you cannot have, hope to prove an absolute bound by looking just all of this. You really need to all of this. Okay, and a few words about isogeny bounds. Uh, uh, by I of S, I will denote the set of all possible cyclic uh, isogeny degrees of elliptic curves in S. And here, really, that there is no difference so whether we're looking at uh, Ij of D and Ib of D, because uh, twisting doesn't change the, uh, the degrees of isogenies that an elliptic curve has. And uh, the, the, here, we know much less than uh, about torsion. So, Mazur and Kenku proved, uh, uh, as also uh, Verinder said, uh, the what the possible isogeny degrees of elliptic curves over Q are. And we don't know over any higher degree. But if uh, you look at a uh, smaller sets, uh, say uh, at the prime degrees uh, that you encounter in Ij and you again throw out Cm because this is the logic thing to do, uh, then this is bounded uh, by 3D minus one. And in fact, by D minus one, if we assume a weaker version of Serre's uniformity conjecture, and really motivated by this question, uh, then Lefourne and Lemos proved that prove this weaker version of the conjecture. And this, uh, what is this weaker uh, version? Uh, so, by the results that we know about Serre's uniformity conjecture, we know that uh, for p larger than 37, if you have a non cm elliptic curve, the mod p Galois representation is either surjective, what you expect always to be true, or is contained in the normalizer of the non split pattern. So Lefourne and Lemus prove that uh, for a large enough P, some really large P, that uh, if it's not surjective, then it has to be equal to the normalized of the non -split pattern. It cannot be a, a strict subgroup of, of, of the proper subgroup of the uh, normalized of the non -split pattern. And this is uh, good enough to, to get this bound D minus one. And this bound D minus one is, is best possible. And uh, so what we want to do, we push this a bit further. We push this as far as possible. So here, we, we, we cannot get anything uh, and only over odd degree number fields. As uh, uh, Martin said in this, uh, in this chat before this talk, uh, odd degree number fields are easier. In a minute, I will say why. Uh, the, the primes in I, uh, I, QC without CM of D for odd D are really contained in L. D, D, and, where L is just a set of primes that appears over Q. And uh, if D is not divisible by any uh, prime uh, here in, in, in L, that then uh, not only the, the largest prime uh, in this set is uh, 37, but, but really the, the largest degree is 37. 
And also for our degree, uh, even if we include CM, we get a, a, an absolute bound. So I guess this is kind of a, uh, related to what uh, Berinder asked. So Berinder asked for I, I, a bound for I E of D, so we get almost, so we get a bound here, at, at least for our D. Okay, uh, let me say a, a few words uh, how, how these things are proved. So uh, uh, we uh, the, the key result is he, uh, here is that we improve on our, on a our result of Elkis from '94, which says that every non-CMQ curve over a number field K is uh, K bar isogenous to the curve defined over a polyfield matrix field K. And uh, what John and I proved is that uh, every non-CMQ curve over a number field K is K isogenous to an elliptic curve with J invariant in a polyfield matrix. So these two results, they look very, very similar. So it's almost like one of these children games where you have two pictures and you have to find the difference. It's, it's kind of very hard to see what the difference is. Because if you start here and you take uh, an elliptic curve with a J invariant over a polyquadratic field, F you can always kind of twist it to, 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 to uh, with the J invariant in a polyquadratic field, you can always twist it to, to get an isogeny to, to a polyquadratic field, F. Anyway, the, the the really the, the, the difference uh, that you have, the, the improvement that we get is that uh, our result uh, says that F is contained in K. Uh, well, well, this one does not. So uh, if you look at this and you spe specialize to K being an odd degree number field, you have that uh, your K is uh, K isogenous to elliptic curve with J invariant in a polyquadratic field, which is also contained in K. But the only polyquadratic field that is contained in an odd degree number field is, is, is really Q. It's a trivial polyquadratic field. It has zero square roots. So this tells us that it's an isogenous elliptic curve with rational J invariants. Uh, so really, uh, this really is the key result. So if you go back to this tower, uh, so the, the Galois representations uh, of these things are now well understood, uh, good enough that we can prove our bounds. So if you go up here, then you just twist. You, you know what the twisting does to the Galois representation. And if you go to elliptic curves which are, which are isogenous to elliptic curves with Right, uh, with the same J, with the same curve, then you know how the Galois representation changes. But here, really, you you know, here there's in a sense a wall of ignorance where where, where uh, you can you can't know anything. We know very little about uh, Galois representations of, of these things in general. So, but for odd degree number fields, we see that this these two things are are equal. So so somehow we pull our Q curves over this wall of ignorance and into this. Uh, I don't know. The field of knowledge, whatever. Uh, okay, yeah. So, so, uh, and I should also, since this is a, a series of talks about conjectures, I, I should also mention this conjecture of Elkies, which says that the, uh, that here this polyquadratic field F uh, is conjectured to be really bounded. Its degrees should be bounded by an absolute one. Uh, so Elkies doesn't say this in in these words. He he says that the uh, degree of the the Q curve sh should be bounded, but his conjecture really implies, implies this. Okay, so uh, this was basically what I wanted to say about uh, from my paper with John. So I, I gave a talk about uh, uh, Q curves over odd degree number fields at, at uh, uh, a conference in well, online conference, which should have been in Banff. And then Abby gave a talk, I think before me or after me about uh, isolated points over odd degree number fields. And then uh, we saw that we should collaborate on uh, sporadic points uh, related to Q curves. And as I hope you will see that this really is, there, there's good reasons to, to look at uh, sporadic points uh, 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 really coming from Q curves. So the, well, I said this. Oh, let me just say that uh, also our results here uh, uh, allow us to develop a quick algorithm to, to, to test whether a given curve is a Q curve. And uh, the advantage here from uh, what uh, comes from this result of, uh, that we prove is that it works by computing the K isogeny class of, of a given elliptic curve. Previously, it was really necessary to com compute in the worst case, the, the K prime isogeny class, where K prime is the Galois closure of, of K over Q. So say if this is a degree six number field K, then you work over degree six number field, and here you might work over degree 720 number field, where you know, everything falls apart. Okay, so uh, let me talk about uh, sporadic points, as I already uh, said. 
So let me first define sporadic points. Uh, uh, there's a few uh, definitions of sporadic points around and uh, uh, in our paper, we use uh, the, the simplest one and uh, it's this one. We say that the point X of degree D on a curve X is sporadic if there are only finitely many uh, points of degree uh, up to and containing D. And I should say uh, that uh, Abby and I have recently just yesterday put a, a preprint pre of these results on, on our web pages. So whoever is, and, and there's a link also on Vantage. So whoever is interested, my, uh, we'd be happy if you take a look. Okay, so why look at sporadic points? Why, why are these things interesting? Why, why should you care about these things? So uh, the, the first reason is uh, if you, you've been uh, looking at these results about PE of D and uh, IE of D, then uh, really uh, the hard part in the determining uh, what these sets are is determining the, the quotation mark sporadic groups, uh, which are those that appear finitely many times. These are really uh, the 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 groups that uh, correspond to sporadic points uh, on modular curves x1 here and x0 here. And these are the, the hardest obstacle. The, the groups that appear infinitely often are, are of course, uh, much easier. They're not completely easy, but, but they are easier. And uh, these are not sporadic groups, uh, I should say, in, in the sense of the classification of uh, finite simple groups, really. They correspond to sporadic points on modular curves. And uh, the groups that appear infinitely often in uh, T of D are known for D up to six. Uh, uh, D equals three was proved by Yankee and Schweizer, D equals four by Yankee and Park, and D equals five uh, and six by Derricks and Sutherland. On the other hand, we know the, the sporadic groups in T of D only for D up to three by the results that I mentioned already. Uh, while the degrees uh, that appear infinitely often in uh, IE of D are known for uh, D equals, uh, D equals two uh, by bars, and D equals three here is result of a uh, yeah. uh, While the sporadic ones are, as I've already said, only uh, known for D equals one by the results of Maser and Kenko. Uh, and uh, okay, let's uh, look at CM sporadic points. So these CM elliptic curves, they have an exceptionally small uh, Galar, uh, Galar representation. So uh, they, they produce sporadic points. And uh, at least for large n and large degree, there is really an abundance of uh, CM sporadic points. You get points really on uh, much lower degrees than you would uh, generically expect. And uh, we have this theorem of Clark, uh, Genau, Pollock, and Saya. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing someone, someone's names. Uh, so uh, for all n greater than or equal to 721, the curve x1 of n has a sporadic CM point. And uh, Bourdon, Eder, Leo, Odomodu, and Virai uh, prove that if E is a CM elliptic curve, then this one single uh, CM elliptic curve will correspond to a sporadic point on uh, X1 of N for infinitely many values of N. So you get infinitely many sporadic points uh, if you let the curve vary over this one curve. And uh, so every C CMJ invariant is uh, a so-called sporadic J invariant. Uh, so they also proved, uh, I, I should say that uh, their paper was about isolated points, but uh, isolated points are really a, a generalization of sporadic points. So sporadic points are subsets of, of uh, isolated points. And all, they also proved that assuming there's uniformity conjecture, that there are only finitely many rational J invariants uh, uh, giving rise to a sporadic point on some modular curve X1 of N. And the set of sporadic uh, J invariants uh, which are in Q uh, contain uh, this J invariant and also this J invariant. You, you will see both of these J invariants appear a few a few more times, and also, as you've seen, uh, all CMJ invariants. And they uh, also proved that uh, uh, they gave a necessary condition for uh, there to be an infinitely many uh, sporadic points over a fixed J invariant. So uh, it's that the degree of, of your point X on uh, X1 of n is of, of a, uh, a very small degree relative to the index of uh, gamma 1 of n in, in PCL theorems. Then not only is, uh, if this inequality is satisfied, which you will see again later, then X is sporadic. And not only is X sporadic, but for any positive integer D, 
and any point y which projects down to uh, x the point y is also spread where uh, pi denotes the national projection from x1 dn to x1 and x okay what about sporadic points of small degree what, what do they, uh, they look like uh, which ones do we know so uh, if we were looking primarily at uh, uh, sporadic points on x1 and x1 of n so uh, if you look at the elliptic curve E, uh, this one here, given with this uh, equation, with J invariant, the one J invariant that you already saw, and LMFDB label 162 C3, uh, this has a point over 21 over the cubic field Q zeta 9 plus, while uh, X121 has only finitely many points of degree up to three. So th this gives you, of course, a sporadic point on X121. And this is, in fact, the least degree of a sporadic point on X1 of N for any. Uh, there are no sporadic points on x1 of n of degree one or two. And uh, also there exists a positive finite number of elliptic curves uh, up to isomorphism uh, with n isogenies over q with, for these values of n. And uh, so the lowest uh, degree of a sporadic point on x0 of n is, is just one. And uh, also Bourdon, Gill, uh, Rouse, and Watson uh, prove that uh, if uh, uh, that this J invariant that we saw here, it gives a, a J invariant over an odd degree number field, uh, is the unique non CMG uh, rational J invariant giving rise to a sporadic point of odd degree of X1. Okay. Uh, and uh, of course, if, if you're interested in, in sporadic points and uh, data corresponding to sporadic points, you should really look at uh, the, the web page of Mark Van Hood. Uh, he has a huge list of sporadic points on X1 of N for uh, values of n up to eight. And uh, there are in fact no sporadic points of degree one and two, while there exist sporadic points of degree three and uh, all of the degrees D from five to 30. And I should say that this also follows uh, from uh, results of Derrickson and Hui uh, on the banality of X1 of n in 2014. And I think that this is also an interesting question. Uh, so uh, we know what, what whether there are sporadic points of degree up to three and then from five to 30. And uh, we expect there to be a lot of sporadic points for, for a high D, uh, for, for larger D perhaps coming from, from CN. Uh, so are there any sporadic points on X1 of N uh, or more generally X1 MN of degree four? So th th this is not known. And I, I would guess, I, I would be surprised if the answer was yes. So I, I think uh, that there, there are no sporadic. Uh, okay, so he, here's, I think, uh, a, a nice, uh, another nice reason to, to look at uh, sporadic points uh, corresponding to Q-curves, even if you don't care about Q-curves or don't care about sporadic points. Uh, so suppose that the, uh, all non-CM Q-curves corresponding to sporadic points on X1 uh, P square line finitely many isogeny classes as uh, P varies through all primes. If this was true, so if, if you knew uh, the finiteness of sporadic points on, on these curves corresponding to q to Q curves, so you can restrict only to Q curves. So this is a very a sparse set of, of elliptic curves, and uh, you just need them to line finitely many isogeny classes. That then the series uniformity conjecture holds. So, so this is a stronger statement of series uniformity conjecture. So let, let me just give a sketch of this uh, of the proof of this, as I guess any, every math talk should have at least one proof. So uh, suppose uh, your elliptic curve uh, over Q is uh, non-CM and uh, the mod P Galois representation is non-surjective for, for P greater than 37. Then uh, by what we know uh, by the images of Galois uh, about the images of Galois representations, we know that, that the image of the mod P Galois representation is contained in the normalizer of the non-split plate type. So the division field of, of this elliptic curve has, has to have, uh, its degree has to divide the order of this group, which is 2P squared minus one. So this is exceptionally small for, for a division field. Of an elliptic curve. So uh, since the full P torsion is defined over this field F, uh, all the P isogenies are defined over field over this field. So in particular, we have two independent P isogenies. Uh, and so we can map it by one uh, P isogenies to, to another elliptic curve E prime, which will be, recall, recall this will be a Q curve. So this, this is E is a base change, so it's a Q curve. And this is isogenous, so it's a Q curve. And this uh, 
since you've mapped uh, to, to, to an elliptic curve with uh, uh, by P isogeny, you can take the dual of the, this and then map to, to another curve uh, and you get a P square isogeny. Uh, and also, uh, some of your p torsion gets killed, but some some survives the map to e prime, and this is necessarily also in, in the kernel of this isogeny, uh, this p square isogeny. So in fact, you're not too far from having a point of order p square. So in fact, this e prime has a point of order p squared in an extension of degree at most uh, p of, of, of this f. So at most two, two times p times p squared minus one or over two. But on the other hand, we have this uh, bound of Abram, which, which uh, basically says that the, the gonality of uh, x1 of p squared grows uh, like a constant times p to the fourth. So if you let your p go uh, large, uh, p grow enough, then uh, uh, the degree of this point will be less than half the gonality, which, uh, which, is, a, which is a sufficient condition for your point to be spread. So for p large enough, uh, such an elliptic curve will produce a sporadic point. So if you prove the finiteness of, of such uh, points, which you do, if uh, th there's finitely many such sporadic points, then, then you have proven the second form of projection. So uh, yeah, maybe I should say that uh, I don't really believe that this is the, the perhaps the right way to prove series uniformity conjecture. This is probably harder than uh, what people have been trying to do, you know, find uh, rational points on modular curves corresponding with the normalizer of the non-split Cartan. But I guess you know it's always best to have uh, two roads to a destination, even if one looks very ugly. And uh, also, basically, the same argument uh, proves. Uh, suppose that there are finitely many sporadic non-CM points on X of P. So you can really just look at this uh, division field itself. It's it's, a, it's exception of an exceptionally small degree. And in, in the same manner, you will produce uh, by Abramovich bounds uh, sporadic points each time uh, on X of P corresponding to elliptic curves. Uh, Defined over Q as again P varies through all times, then uh, Serre's uniformity conjecture. Again. Okay, of course, this uh, motivates the question does, does there exist only finitely many uh, isogeny classes of non CMQ curves giving rise to sporadic points on X1 and X1? If yes, as you've seen, this would imply Serre's uniformity conjecture. And what we do is in our paper is uh, we, we prove the easy case. Uh, of the odd degree uh, case. We show that uh, all the odd degree sporadic points on X1 of N corresponding to non-CMQ curves lie in the isogeny class of, of this J invariant that, that you've seen already. <coughs> and we also proved that uh, there might be infinitely many uh, uh, sporadic points in this, uh, in this isogeny class, but we proved that th there can be none uh, on x1 of p of k. So if x is a sporadic point on x1 of p of k, a sporadic point of what degree corresponding to a q curve, then E necessarily has c. So let me just say a few words about uh, uh, the infinite, the infinitude of, of uh, sporadic points in one isogeny class. So uh, we also proved that suppose that there is a non-CM point x uh, on x1 of n corresponding uh, to a q curve, satisfying again the same inequality. So uh, again, the, the degree of the point is very small compared to the, the, the index of gamma one in PCL two of z. Uh, we proved then that, that there exists infinitely many sporadic points x prime uh, on on the curves x one of d of n with d varying. So there, there, there is only finitely many sporadic points on any any curve. So then we get infinitely many sporadic points on infinitely many curves in, in this case, in the, in the same isogeny class and uh, with, finite, uh, with infinitely many uh, different J, uh, J invariants. And furthermore, if degree of X is odd, then again, we'll produce infinitely many such sporadic points. And uh, of, of course you can ask yourself, uh, is this a sensible uh, inequality? Is, is this something out outrageously small? Can we even hope uh, for, for this to be true, or, or, or can we never hope for this to be true? And I, I think this, this, who knows whether this is ever true? It, it might well be, because the sporadic J invariant, the, the other one, minus seven to 11 cubed, which corresponds to a degree six point on X1 37, and also on a degree one point on X naught of 37. And uh, this curve is of gonality 18. So th this, this is a, a point in exceptionally small degree. And this point almost satisfies this. 
So uh, elliptic curves with this J invariant have, have uh, uh, surjective mod P uh, representations for all P apart from 37. But if they had a non-surjective mod P representation for any other P, then they, they would have, uh, they would break this bound. So this just, uh, this J invariant just barely misses this, this bound. So I, I wonder whether maybe in Van Hooy's uh, list, the, the, there is a, a non-CM point uh, satisfying this. Uh, maybe this is a good computational project. Okay, and uh, let me just end with a few questions. Uh, again, as this is a seminar about questions. So does there exist a non-CM G invariant that satisfies uh, this? And uh, uh, does there exist a non-CM isogeny class with uh, infinitely many sporadic, which gives infinitely many sporadic, sporadic points from all X1 of X? So the answer to this, if the answer to this is yes, then the answer to this is yes, but there might be a no here and a yes here. And does every non-CM isogeny class that has one sporadic point in, in all X1 of n have infinitely many? And finally, uh, maybe the hardest and most important, what can we say about sporadic points in X1 of n or just of X1 of n squared? If we want to talk to pairs uniformity conjecture or of even degree. So these are some questions and with them I will end. And thanks everybody for listening. Wonderful. Thanks. Great. Who would like to ask the first question? So, so this connection with the non split Cartan um, curve, so the, the, this theorem, it, it, you're only using that the size of that group is two times p squared minus one. That's all you're using about the non split Cartan there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So if you have uh, some some other uh, image of Galois, uh, which is very small, you you can you can also produce uh, a similar result. So what what kind of new idea do you think would be needed to handle the even degree case. Oh, uh, the, the even degree case is much harder. It's much harder. So the, the, the key thing that uh, gets used is, uh, maybe I should have also mentioned this, is really this uh, result uh, by uh, John and myself here that, uh, that that you are isogenous to an elliptic curve with rational J invariance. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, this lets you really say something. Uh, this lets you connect uh, things with, uh, uh, Galois representations of elliptic curves over Q. There, there, there is a connection here. Well, in even degree, you, you really have, uh, you have nothing. So no, nothing is known in, in even degree. So this is in, in a... Is there like a bound known on the degree of the polyquadratic field or the discriminant or? Oh, well, well the, the conjecturally, Elke's conjecture is that yes, but nothing is known, no. Or the degree, there's this notion of the degree of the Q curve. This is the least common multiple of, of the degree of, a, uh, of an, in this isogeny class of an elliptic curve to, to its Galois conjugates. So this is this elk is in fact, uh, uh, conjectures to be bound, but, but it hasn't been proven. Even if you look at a quadratic uh, fields, if you look at uh, elliptic curves over quadratic fields and you look at the degree of the isogeny between E and E sigma, this is, this. There is no known bound. So I have a question. Um, in my talk, I, I mentioned a result with Paul Pollock where we were we were looking at elliptic curves uh, with rational J invariant. So that was one of your classes, right? Um, and we proved a polynomial bound on the size of the torsion subgroup over a degree D number field. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, using work of Alvaro Lozano Robledo on uh, Galois representations of elliptic curves over Q. Could, could you, would, I'll just say it. So could you generalize uh, either like immediately or, or as, as a, the prospect of that to, to Q curves? Uh, 
Maybe of, an, of even degree, of the odd degree. I would guess yes over for odd degree, but for even degree, as I said, no. Or right, because you need to, so somehow the, the fact that the, what are you getting? You, so for odd degree, what was the result? You get that the, it's uh, isogenous to an elliptic curve with rational chain invariant. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so you should be able to bound. I mean, I guess it might require some work. It's not like straightforward. It's not just you, that you plug it in and you get the result, but I guess some work, after some work, it could, could be done. But, uh, it sounds like it could be an interesting project. For, yeah, for yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a good question. Yeah, I, I think that's an interesting project. I, I guess another, I have a vaguer question, and I, I think it's a little bit remedial. I'm trying to remember what I think I used to know about, about Q curves. But so the so the set of J invariants of Q curves outside of the rational numbers, like, so we, we should think of this as being a, a sparse set of J invariants? Is that what, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, certainly, you? certainly, yeah. So I somehow mean, from Elkies's result, do they? Am I remembering correctly that like they all they all kind of come from rational points on Atkin Lehner quotients? Of, yes, of X yes, of it? yes, right, right. I mean, so, uh, yeah. almost. So uh, each Q curve is isogenous to to uh, what Elkies proves. Uh, so this is basically the result that is now displayed. This uh, Elkies nineteen ninety four. He he proves that any Q curve is isogenous from a uh, uh, point on the model on x not uh, a quotient of x not, not of n by, by a group of atkin linear quotients. Yeah, so, but the fact that you said isogenous. Is yeah, yeah. Something. Okay, so. Okay, <laughs> good. Great, let's see, anyone else uh, have a question? I have a question that's, that's maybe for Martin Derricks. Um, my recollection from the looking at the low degree points and the canality bounds was that that, that degree six point on X1 to 37 was like the absolute extreme that we knew. I, uh, you, you mentioned maybe looking in, in Ben Hui's uh, database, oh, but my, I yeah. feel like I remember that we already looked or somebody already looked. Oh, you did, okay, okay. That, that that was my impression too. That this this point is really in freakishly small degree, yeah. or maybe yes. wickedly small degree to to continue. Yeah. Uh, the yes, it is definitely wickedly small. <laughs> um, the, the only thing you can get better is if you are willing to resort to CM curves. Um, uh, yeah, just, I mean, just, I, I think CM curves might even satisfy this, but for them it's not so interesting because you know that the, that there will be infinitely many uh, sporadic points, both both in the isogeny class and uh, over a single J invariant. So, so for them, maybe proving such a result wouldn't be so interesting. Like, but uh, then then related to this, like, how far off is 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 the the inequality? Is it by Less than a factor two. Yes, yes, yes. That's okay. Uh, so because there's this inequality, right? Yeah. And uh, like and, and and at least um, uh, the the data by Mark van Hooy and me actually shows that you can all uh, that it is very plausible that the, the the thing on the right side could also be lowered by a factor of two by theoretical means of course we don't know how to do it but the 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 empirical data seems to show that the the, the right hand side which is a gonality bound that, that that is actually on the high side and that that mm. could probably also be improved by a factor. yeah i think so i think if you uh uh, let me think. So, if you, if it was enough to uh, half this bound, then 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 I think it would be. Uh, I think it's that. I mean, I guess it's not hard to check. I mean, you just type, uh, you know, you just compute the gamma one of n and see whether uh, six uh, satisfies this. I guess it's easy to check. But my, my recollection is, is is that the answer is yes. That it's not so far. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If uh, if it so... was degree three. I think if it if, if it was degree three, then 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 it would satisfy. Yeah. Wonderful. Let's see. Other questions?
Okay, well then just one quick announcement. Um, the Vantage Seminar is going to take a break during July and then we'll come back in August uh, with a new topic, uh, which we will be announcing later. And so um, thanks again for a wonderful, a wonderful semester. I hope you enjoyed the talks and looking forward to seeing you uh, late summer, early fall. Oh, I guess we should thank Philip again. So we did, we, I forgot to do that. So let's all um, thank Philip again for a, uh, a wonderful talk and um, for ending this great series. <laughs> And thanks again to the, to the organizers for organizing this.